Hello and welcome to The Authority of Love. I'm your host, Greg Williams, and uh, once again, we're, we're joined by co-host David Walls, director of the Family Foundation here in Kentucky. But we also have a very special guest and a friend of both of ours this week, Representative Matt Lockett. He's actually Matt from my district and a good friend. And by the way, before I let this, you guys go at it, congratulations on your engagement. Thank you very Enjoy much. That. Yeah, Thanks Thank for you. joining us, David. Thank you as well for co-hosting. Greg, good to be with you, and uh, Representative Lockett, so thankful that you were able to join us. The um, I know the legislative session recently ended. Hopefully yes. you've been able to catch your breath a Rest little bit. Rest and relax a little bit, yes. <laughs> yeah. So it was the uh, end of the 60-day long session, passed a budget, a lot, lot of flurry of activity. Uh, Greg and I have talked a, a little bit um, uh, in the last uh, few episodes that we recorded leading up to the sessions, but, you know, one of the important bills that uh, they got across the finish line for, for pro-family uh, conservatives that were that we were talking about was your bill, House Bill 278. Uh, we focused a lot on the uh, an amendment that was added to that bill that would protect kids f from online pornography. But uh, I want to take it just a minute to one to say thank you for your leadership yes. on that issue, yes. but to also give you an opportunity to talk about the underlying bill uh, and what and, and some of the protections that were in place on that bill and why it was so necessary uh, for that bill to pass. Yeah, uh, so we started on House Bill 278 back last year. Um, I was approached by the Attorney General's office um, and some others as well about some different protections for, uh, for children that they were seeking. Um, and, and so that's, that's how the bill started. Every time that we met, we added something else to it because a different topic would come up um, and it, it, it became a very large bill um, in terms of our goal was to uh, protect kids in abusive situations. Yeah. And so a lot of the bill increases penalties on child abuse and uh, child sexual assault. Uh, part of the bill is um, as well pro prohibits uh, superintendents from um, hiring anybody uh, that that has a past uh, with that um, and and several other things too that the bill did but yeah it kind of morphed into something very big uh, that I was very proud of yeah I remember um, it, it's funny how how these things work I remember I was in your office for a meeting on another topic yeah. I think maybe before the session even had started and uh, got to, to sit in on a meeting that you were having on this topic. So, so an important underlying bill, your bill had passed uh, the House mm -hmm. and had gone over to the Senate, and as sometimes things start getting quite chaotic at the end of the session, uh, there was a, a deep desire to, uh, to pass a bill to protect children from online pornography that a number of states had, other, uh, had done, and really the only opportunity that was left was to add to your bill, an amendment uh, for those online protections, and I and I just want to uh, acknowledge this publicly, because anytime you take an amendment that's an entire other bill and put it on a bill, even if both of those issues, as standalone issues, are pretty straightforward, uh, it can com can complicate the process. Yes. Yeah. Oh, but it so, didn't cause you any trouble, did it? No, <laughs> no, no, no okay. not at just all. Just want to make sure. Right? But it takes a it takes a <laughs> yeah. uh, you know uh, 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 someone that was willing to you know to put in the work and to to to, to ensure that these yeah. things happen. And so I just want to want to thank you in, uh, again for for doing that. So uh, what ended up happening, as we previously discussed, is an amendment was added in the Senate and ended up passing. The governor's actually already signed it into law. Yes. So. That portion of the bill is law. It doesn't go into effect till later this year. But as you talked and did such a good job uh, discussing on the House floor, these online protections uh, have already been upheld in some states, and it has been leading to uh, some states actually seeing some of the largest pornographic websites yeah. shutting down because they don't want to follow the law to simply require that people that come on those sites are age verified. So, That's right. And, and I think it's important, too. Of course, the, the whole concept was to... Uh, protect children right. from from this this content but what i've seen as well is that since since this has passed i've actually had adult males come to me and have said this is going to help me as well because if yes. if i have to put in you know my uh, driver's license or some type of verification yeah. i'm just not going to do it yeah. and and so they have come and said 
you know, it's kind of a roundabout thank you, yeah. you know, but I think this, this will actually end up going further than just uh, protecting kids yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, and, and David, you and I talked about, it's interesting, you said it continued to morph and get larger and larger, which should say something to us as a culture as to what we're doing to kids. Mm-hmm. That we've got to have more and more laws, bigger and bigger. So thank you again. I echo David's thank, thanks you to you. Well, the bad part that. about it is that we, as a culture, we have people that want to begin early with our children, with yes. indoctrination, yeah. with yes. with things like pornography and access to pornography and other issues as well. Yes. But when right. when we understand that this starts at such a young age, mm-hmm. sometimes even unbeknownst to parents, unbeknownst to the children. The even first by time design, themselves, yeah. even by design, it's not known. Correct, to and so yeah. I, I always shudder to think that the state has to step in yeah. as a protection yeah. mode, but in this case, we yeah. do. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah. did, and I tell you what we've also found out with the brain research is the earlier you get them, the harder it is to turn them back around. Correct. There's a, a scripture verse that says, "Train them in the way they should go." Yeah, and when they're old, that doesn't obviously in scripture it's saying, "Train them in the way of the Lord." Mm-hmm. But if you train them in another way, it's going to be hard to turn Same that thing. ship around. Correct. Uh, because that's the way God designed us. So thanks again. Uh, leads us into the next thing we wanted to ask. David, I know you and I talked oh. about this. One of the missed opportunities was the DEI bill. Yeah. Uh, would you share with them a little bit more? I know David and I have talked a little bit yeah. about from your perspective yeah, what you I can. Was, I, was, I was disappointed to, to, to see that we walked out of session without any type of, of uh, protections yeah. against Same type that. of thing, right? It, it, yes. Indoctrination early on. Correct. And so what, what happened there, the House passed a version, the Senate passed a version, and in the end, the last hours, those those two could not come together. And so it, it ended up being a very big missed opportunity. And, and so so we walked out, ended session without any bill that dealt with where, it. Where do you think, uh, I've asked Dave before, because you, obviously you're there, Dave is there a lot. Where do you think that will go? Is that something you think they will pick I up? I think and it'll try come back. Happen? Yeah, Good. I think it'll come Good. back. And what that looks like, I don't know. The difference, I think the House version was a lot more robust. Mm-hmm. The Senate version was a lot more kind of pared down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so my guess would be it's going to have to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. And just to remind our listeners, DEI, because we that term the is diversity, become, equity, inclusion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. But, uh, but and, the and issue on is on college campuses. Yes, and I was just going to say, yeah. not to make, get into what all's been going on, but boy, have we seen yes. what's going on on our college campuses and how some of these radical ideologies, as they're allowed to play out, are the impacting. ugly side of yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. It has gotten yeah. ugly. Yeah. yeah. And it's a big part of that's the that's the foundation of a lot of it. Yeah. yeah, really. Is. So we need to do something about that. David, one of your uh, things that you were so excited about, I know we wanted to ask Matt, the, the Amendment 2. Yeah, so a, a, a proposed <laughs> school choice constitutional amendment I, I, that, that the legislature passed. And so we, we talked a little bit about that. That was, it feels like a lifetime ago. It does, was a yeah. early, It wasn't early in the session, maybe about midway through yeah. the session. So both chambers uh, requires a constitutional majority, 60%. They passed a a proposed educational freedom uh, amendment, but want to let uh, Representative Lockett, who's a supporter of school choice, but there's going to be a lot of misinformation, already has been, about what this constitutional amendment is, what it does, and what it doesn't do. I'd love to have you just share a little bit. Yeah, so I I think it's important because it, it, it gives the voters a voice. We hear all the time, well, you guys did this, you guys passed this, you guys do do this and that. And in our pushback off of this bill, that was the pushback, was to say you're instituting school choice, you are sending tax dollars to private schools. And in, in that's just not true for yeah. this particular bill. What this bill does is it says we as, as the General Assembly believe this is such an important issue that we, we want the voters to decide if we send public dollars into private schools or uh, public charter schools, whatever the case uh, might be, but that that gives us the opportunity to say we can send dollars, quote, outside of the common school system. Oh. And that's all it does. It, yeah. it, 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 it doesn't make any type of policy decisions. Right. It doesn't say only Christian schools get it, only secular school. It, it just says, voters, we want you to decide, is this something that we want in Kentucky? Do Yeah, essentially... Do we want Kentucky 
to have every option on the table in terms of uh, empowering parents yeah. to uh, to be able to to um, have the have resources to educate their kids. You know, it, it's interesting, um, Matt. In the last, I think, few weeks, the continued explosion on the school choice has been sweeping the nation. We've, I think, Georgia, uh, Alabama, uh, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana. Um, a number of states are passing various uh, school choice programs, and it would, you know, Kentucky is really going to be left. I mean, it's already all of our neighbors have some version of, of a of a school choice program. Kentucky is really going to be left behind. They're, the kids and families and students of Kentucky. Yeah, because the be research shows that when you do yeah. this, it's we've talked about it several times. Rising tide raises all ships. All of the children benefit. Right. All of them do. Yeah, and the studies have shown in the states that have implemented, it's actually improves the public school system yes, as well. All and, of and, and so really this is about just saying we want a, all of the above options available on the table, but yeah. it's going to be up to voters. It's going to be well, up to yeah. voters in November. And that's the bottom line, I yeah. think. The bottom line is, is to say that we as a commonwealth, we as yeah. a state, yeah. our goal is to educate our children. Right. We yeah. want the best education possible. We know that a huge majority of people are still going to choose public schools, and that's great. Yeah. But there ought to be that option to say, you know, this this school doesn't, um, you know, possibly do what I want it to do or this, you know, whatever. Yeah. But we have to focus on education, not on indoctrination, not on saying we're good, but not educating our kids. Right. That's the control. bottom line. Right. Well, and, and the interesting thing is you're doing two things I think there, this, this amendment does. It, you, it gives Kentuckians a voice. Yeah. And it places it back in the hands of parents. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we ought to be doing. Schools ought to be helping support yeah. that, not work against that, as you kind of alluded and to. We've earlier, got to be like very clear, too, on in the next several months, we've got to stay vigilant because there's going to be a ton of out-of-state dollars pour in yeah. to yeah. defeat this. Teachers unions, public schools don't yeah. want this. Yes. And, and so we've got to, to stand firm, not only stand firm, but also fight against all of the misinformation right. yep. that is going exactly to come about right. around this. And, and I, David, and I've reminded David, he's in agreement. I don't say it because he's not. It's not Kentucky's do dollars. That's right. It's my dollars and your it's dollars and David's. Dollars. It's our tax dollars, so we ought to have a voice in it. Mm -hmm. That's the way government works best. That's right. And we should have. So but speaking of that, David, primary's coming up. Matt, I know you're going to have a tough race, right? I don't have a primary. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, yeah, good, yeah. Thankfully, we no primary too. for me. We are, too. We are yes. too. Yeah, but we, but we are in, in primary election season, and, uh, you know, we encourage folks to, to get equipped. Uh, there are some, some uh, important races. Uh, and so if you go to votekentucky.us, as we mentioned before, we, uh, we partner with the Christian Voter Guide company, iVoterGuide, great, great folks. And, and we've got resources available on any of the contested um, primary races and so encourage folks to go to that website and make sure you get a, equipped to get out and vote you know uh, in a lot of in a lot of primary races um, you know the primary is primary uh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, you know in a lot of yeah. districts yeah. you know what happens in the primary is really gonna it's almost Determine, foreordained right. what, what could happen in November so um, certainly we'll be uh, publishing a, a voter guide for the November general election as well but uh, encourage folks to, to get equipped and to be salt and light with yeah. who you vote for. Mm -hmm. KentuckyFamily.org. That's David. Loveandlordship.com. How can they contact you, Matt, if they have questions? They can always um, e email me at uh, matt.lockett at lrc.ky.gov. It's a long okay. address. Yeah. But yeah. You can go back and listen again. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Thanks for Thank your you. prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in the love and God worship of Christ. Stay tuned for my good friend Greg Horn at 1245 and Hope is Here. I'm Greg Williams with Matt Lockett and David Walls. You're listening to The Authority of Love. <laughs>